What's up, everybody? Chris Douglas here with You, Me, Spirituality. Looks like I got a special guest, Leonard, hanging out again. He's such a spiritual being himself. He's an Aquarius, so he's kind of all over the place. Me, I'm the Pisces. I go with the flow. I drink a little coffee. And today with my coffee, let me get a sip. Mm. Oh, that's exactly what I needed. We're going to talk about the seven spiritual laws of success. Success. Whew. That's a mouthful. Yeah, Leonard, that's a mouthful. So, and I even got really organized for this because I think this is a very, very important topic. So I'm going to release one of the spiritual laws of success per video. So you guessed it. There's going to be seven videos. And today, the first spiritual law of success has three elements. I'm not going to tell you what it is quite yet. Actually, I will. I'll tell you right now. It's the zone of pure potentiality. Leonard, you can't be barking this whole time, homie. He wants to go play. He needs to go into the zone of pure potentiality. This makes great sense too. So initially, to get into the zone of pure potentiality, where you can really do whatever you want, whatever you dream, whatever you think, you release into this zone that the author uh, Deepak Chopra, I hope I said his name right, I'm terrible at saying names, is uh, this is where you really release your intentions. So to get there, you have to, you have to do a little bit of work. Universe isn't going to be like, uh, close your eyes and tell me what you think and I'll make it happen. It doesn't work that way. So this author really talks about the zone of potentiality or pure potentiality. You get there by doing three main things. And yes, you have to stack these on top of the other six spiritual laws of success in order to hack the algorithm of life. So in order to get into the zone of pure potentiality, the first thing you have to do, and this is, it sounds easy, it's tough. Meditate twice a day, you know, after you wake up, before you go to bed, for 30 minutes. That is 30 minutes of silence, 30 minutes of you suppressing your ego. So your ego is this thing in your head that is like telling you to do all this stuff while your intuition and spirit is like your you're just like comes out of the blue and tells you you shouldn't take that road you should take a different way home and then you get home and you find out on the news the way you normally take just had a three car wreck and you would have been in the middle of it but you listened to your intuition and took the other way home but your ego on the other hand is this thing that's just like spinning it's like chris you should do this chris you should do that chris you should do this chris you should do that and you're endlessly being pulled and then your ego also is like protective of your self-image, what you drive, what house you live in, all of these factors. And that's something you just have to suppress through meditation. And it is quite difficult um, so far, especially in the beginning. Meditating like 10 minutes a day has been hard and I've missed days. But as soon as I stepped up to 30 minutes, I started getting this sensation like my heart was racing and I'm like I'm meditating why is my heart racing but then I looked into some information and I found out I was finding new sensations I was getting deeper into myself and I was feeling more and that was something I wasn't recognizing on the surface before we get lost in me the main key here is to focus on meditating 30 minutes twice a day and it's difficult, so take your time. Maybe not start off with 30 minutes, do 10, do 20, then step up to 30, or slowly progress your way to 30. You don't have to do this in one day. The universe will wait for you, believe me. Every second is just a second closer to you dying, so you have to do it at some time. I'll use that as like a motivated push. The second part of entering the zone of pure potentiality, gosh, it's a hard word to say, pure potentiality. The second way to get there is by simply walking outside and enjoying and observing nature. And you know, something that is really helpful with this is like sunrises are really beautiful. Wake up in the morning, get your cup of coffee and look at the sunrise. Also, you can watch the sunset. That's another uh, great time. We call that golden hour in production world. That is when I love to go out and just film, shoot pictures because the lighting is just godly. It's beautiful. It's golden hour, it's the healing hour. And that is where I find myself endlessly kind of like sitting outside and observing. And sunrises, eh, I'm not really much the morning person. I'm a Pisces. I like to sleep in. So all you have to do is go outside and observe like the wind hitting the trees, hitting the leaves, leaves falling, 
observing animals in their natural habitat. Like you don't have to mastermind this. You can simply just go outside and see what you enjoy and love being there and endlessly feel grateful for being able to experience that experience. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, comment below. I'll help you through it. It's, it's really, really a big topic. Number three, the most important. So if you didn't listen to number one and two, make sure you listen to number three. The third key to entering the zone of pure potentiality is, and you probably did it in this video, non-judgment. And this is more than just like being like, look at that person. Ugh, I don't like what they're wearing. Ooh, look at that dog. What is he doing? Like that's really, that's, that's superficial judgment. The key to the zone of pure potentiality and non-judgment is simply not judging anything that happens in life. If you get a speeding ticket and you're non-judgmental, you say, cheers, I got a speeding ticket. I wonder what that's teaching me. And anything that happens in your life, whether you have a court day and you feel like you shouldn't be there, one, you shouldn't be judging whether you should be there or not. You should show up and be ready for what the universe is serving you up because it's probably a problem and every problem creates an opportunity to grow yourself and create more abundance around you. And that is what I've really learned is like, my life has been wild, crazy. Like, if it's a roller coaster ride, it just goes like this endlessly. I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, not again, not again. And then I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, oh my gosh. But as soon as I stepped away and stopped judging everything that was happening to me and feeling sorry for myself and then also feeling great for myself, and as soon as I just flowed with what happens and as it happens, just literally living through it and experiencing as much from a conscious mind in the universe as I can, I've really noticed the universe is like, hey, Chris, here's another one. Hey, Chris, here's another one. It's throwing me all these gifts and I'm just sitting over here like, I don't know where to continually put all these gifts because they're so awesome and I stopped judging. And on top of that, I also went outside and I enjoyed nature every day. And then to just one up that and really hit the zone of pure potentiality, get this, I've been meditating twice a day for 30 minutes, low key, super hard. But I'm really finding, I wouldn't say, I'm finding my true self, but I'm also getting all these little like intuitive thoughts throughout the day that didn't come in at this rate. And I'm just like, wow, that's a good idea. I really like that idea. And then if I sleep on that idea that comes in, guess what? It circles right back around a little bit later and I'm like, yeah, that would be a good idea. We should probably make a move on it. And then I like don't do anything again and then boom, then I'm like, maybe I should text this person, set up a meeting and they can help me and this would help them. And then we're creating all this abundance around us by this idea that came in through my intuition. Wow, that's a lot. So the first Spiritual law of success is entering the zone of pure potentiality, and you have to do three things. Meditate twice a day for 30 minutes. You have to observe nature and just put yourself in nature daily. And then number three is don't judge anything. Whether this video is terrible, whether you just got a speeding ticket, don't judge anything. Just go with the flow of the universe. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you. Episode two will be uh, the law of giving, which if you aren't rich, you don't have to be rich to be able to give in this universe. So we'll cover the law of giving as the second spiritual law of success. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so that when I drop the next video, you guys won't even have to stress of when it's coming out. You already know it. Thank you and have a nice day.